How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today I'm gonna to look at the Betterment Robo Investor app. Right now, I actually do not have an account with Betterment, but I have an idea of what it's about. Basically, it's an automated robo investor application where it asks you a whole bunch of questions like your age, your income, your investment style, and then based on your answers, it's gonna tailor a profile, um, the number of percentage of bonds, stocks, etc um, the mix up of your total portfolio and then when you put money into it it's going to automatically um, divvy up whatever amount that you put in into those proper allocations now for this app it's basically pretty good for people that doesn't really want to know about the details of investing they don't really want to go and pick a bond fund and then go pick a uh, low-cost ETF uh, S&P 500 fund. The cost of the fee here is about 0.25% and they say um, this amount that they charge you is going to be offset probably by the ta tax loss harvesting that they do for you. Tax loss harvesting is nothing but you selling something that took a loss, okay? Then you can take up to uh, $3,000 worth of credits or you can uh, offset whatever gains that you make. Then after you sell something, you buy something not very similar to that. So um, a completely different ticker symbol could qualify as something different. So you can sell an S&P 500 and then go buy the NASDAQ, which is, you know, to me is roughly the same. Over a really long period of time, it's not gonna be the same, but you know, if you're looking at like five to 10 years, it's roughly the same and you can go and sell the S&P 500 and then go buy the NASDAQ and you'll have roughly the same effect. Now the trick here for the layman investor is that the cost of betterment, it's automatic. So it's kind of nice that way, but they charge you 0.25% fee. This is relatively low to you know other types of fees um, like the high cost mutual funds. However, this 0.25% fee is on top of all the ETF funds that they invest in for you. So they're gonna go pick uh, really low cost ETF funds. And then on top of this, they're gonna charge you 0.25%. So if the ETF fund charges, let's say 0.1%, okay, your total effective fee is gonna be 0.35%. So then that makes it, you know, kind of like a cross between you investing in ETF funds versus you buying a bit higher cost mutual funds. So it's like kind of in between. And to me, this might be valuable for some people to be able to just go, okay, let me just, you know, plop down a whole bunch of money. You take care of it for me. Um, but you know, you're going to lose out on 0.25% fee and you'll realize if you compound this over a really long period of time, it's going to be pretty costly. Um, if you have a sizable portfolio by the time you retire. So if you really want to squeeze out every last drop of your retirement account, you can go sign up for Betterment and check out what, uh, the division are between the portfolio. There's going to be a whole bunch of different things they buy into like bonds there's a bunch of different etf funds and you can just see it'll tell you which one that you need to buy and at what allocation then you can just copy this and then just go back to robin hood or something and then buy these funds yourself and then you don't have to pay the 0.25 percent fee not everyone wants to do all this work including the tax loss harvesting part so this betterment thing just kind of allows you to be lazy and you're paying for a service here. It's kind of similar to paying for a housekeeper or something, they do something for you. Or when you pay for like a lawnmower person, they do this stuff for you, therefore you have to pay a certain amount of money. If you have $100,000 in it, 1% is actually $1,000. So 0.25% is actually $250. If you think about it in the grand scheme of things, $250, it might be a reasonable amount to pay per uh, $100,000 that you uh, invest with them. When you look at the total portfolio, it's a small amount. So, you know, you might wanna weigh things here and in terms of how much you wanna do yourself and how much you want to offload all this work to someone else. Now, what I'm gonna do here is download this Betterment app. I'm gonna sign up for it right on camera for you. And then I'm gonna analyze it a bit, just use it myself a little bit. And then um, I'm gonna come back here and just kind of talk about what I noticed. Maybe there's something brand new that I noticed that I did not know before. So let me get to it. So let me just start the app over here, get started. You can roll over an existing IRA or 401k, open an account, which is what I'm doing. You can learn more about Betterment. So let me just open it, continue. I'm gonna do an IRA in my case, continue to sign up enter age income now you see here based on what you enter it's gonna go oh yeah you should put in 90 percent stock 
10% bond, and then you have all these different highlights of different things. So let's look at what they actually did here. VTI, some sort of ETF fund, US total stock, 16%. VT fee, large cap value, VOE, VBR, VEA, VWO. And then these are just a whole bunch of stocks, whole bunch of bonds in different kind of allocations. And uh, I guess that's it. Low fees, smart rebalancing over here. It means if some of these stocks gets too big, it's going to try to get it back to this target percentage over here. Personalized advice, extreme tax efficiency, tax loss harvesting. Okay. Okay. So I'm going back. I'm going to continue here. Let me put in my email. I just entered in my address. Now it's asking for the social security number. I'm just going to put this in without putting it on camera. Bunch of other stuff, create my account. Okay, so now it wants me to go back to my email and confirm it. Let me go do that. I confirmed my email, so now let me just log in. No, no send notifications. So now it wants me to link my bank account to fund it. Traditional IRA, give betterment to three friends and earn one year management free. Somehow it wants access to my contacts, but I don't really want to do that. It seems like here, if you want one year's worth of management fees free, you need to invite three friends uh, with an email. So you have to type it in, send them an email, and they have to actually uh, fund an account. Then let's say you have $100,000 in there, which is worth $250 uh, every single year. Then you get $250 worth of fee-free management, it seems. So I go click in the traditional IRA, projected balance, what you've invested, what you've earned, earnings, time weighted return, projections, transfer money over here. So this is the interesting part here in the portfolio. It shows you all these target allocations, but somehow it does not show you. Oh, here it is, VTI, Vanguard Total Star Market ETF. And I guess if you go down, um, I don't see the expense ratio here yet. Um, neither does this show it, but as you can see, you can just go around and uh, just kind of copying VTI 16.2%, VTV 16.2%, and you can just kind of follow their um, allocation if you really want to. Based on my questionnaire and what age I am, how much income I make, whatever, it just set my allocation to 90% stock, which is, yeah, I have a long time to invest. Uh, I'm going to retire much, much later. So then the stocks can go all over the place. And therefore, this is much riskier. So as you grow older, it's going to have less and less stock, as you can see like this. Less, 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 less. To the point where you have 100% bonds. Okay. So let's save that. Now let's look at all the stock they would like to invest in. Total stock market, VTI, which is uh, a broader index than the S&P 500. It means it's total, all the stocks. Large cap, VTV, mid cap, VOE, small cap, VBR, developed markets, VEA, emerging markets, VWO. So with one swipe of looking at all of this, we kind of know um, everything that this thing wants to invest in. I have to uh, go back to the main menu and come back into this portfolio and it will get updated. So now it shows 100% bonds, just a, as a fictitious example. Short-term treasuries. Okay, so this is something that was not there before, SHV. So there are ETF funds that changes as you change your um, target allocation or your investment style. So over here, let's say I want to go somewhere in between. I save it. Now it says 50% stocks, 50% bonds. Total stock market, we had that before. Large cap, mid cap, small cap, developed markets, emerging markets. These are all the same as before. Inflation protected bonds. Now this is something that wasn't in, in there when we had 90% stocks um, high quality bonds corporate bonds was there corporate bond was there international bonds was there emergency bonds was there so it does seem like um, these etf funds they change as you uh, change your aggressiveness where you are in terms of uh, where your investment goals are at the moment so let me close this out we don't need this anymore
So there it is. I hope this was informative for me to go through the sign up process to just kind of show you uh, what you can expect from signing up to the service. It is important to think about tax loss harvesting is because whenever you lose money on a stock, you can essentially take that loss and harvest it basically and get it now instead of um, trying to wait for the stock to come back up and cancel itself. Now, whenever you harvest a loss, the basis of that new thing that you bought, it's going to be a bit lower because you sold whatever stock and then bought something somewhat similar and the pricing of it, you're going to sell it for, let's say $3,000. And then you bought something else that is um, at a low price for $3,000. So um, the cost basis of this is going to be low. So by the time you sell it much later on at some point or whatnot, you're going to have to pay taxes on the full amount from the low cost basis all the way up to the top. So it's not like you get free money here. It's just that you're able to take the loss today, take advantage of it in terms of taxes. But if you have a whole bunch of stuff in your portfolio that has a really low, low cost basis, it means when you do sell it sometime later, maybe you never sell it because you know you just keep it around and just let it expand and you're gonna have a cost basis of let's say $1, but then the stock is worth like $1,000. If you sell it, the gains on that, it's going to be $9,999. So um, you have to watch out that uh, tax loss harvesting. Uh, it's just kind of like shifting money around how when you take advantage of the loss or not. So if you can actually consider this as paying for the 0.25% fee or not, eh, it's a little sketchy over there. So do I recommend Betterment? Uh, I'm just kind of on the fence on this, but most investors is not going to be savvy enough to go around allocating the right percentages. I'm sure that, you know, they think a lot about this and go, oh, you know, the exact percentage of this fund with this type of risk is going to be 16.4%. Well, they came up with this. This is why they have this app. Every single person that signs up to this thing, they are using a script basically that goes, okay, um, based on what you have, you're going to invest in this way. So that's why they call it robo investor. Um, it's a robot that is managing your money really. With that said, you can actually do all of this manually. You can go and rebalance things if you have a stock portfolio account that does not have trading fees, for example, Robinhood. Um, I'll leave a link on that down in the video description below if you're interested in getting a brokerage account that does not have trading fees. So they're probably not going to be very happy about me saying this because you can actually go into this app, um, sign up and stuff just like I did and look at the percentage breakdown um, and then go turn around and go to Robinhood and just go, okay, these are the 10 stocks I need to buy at this allocation. And then when it comes to the time, you can also do your tax loss harvesting. For example, let's say uh, the stock market plummets like 20%, there's a correction. Then you can go and uh, sell a particular ETF, okay? And then you can uh, try to find a similar ETF. Um, that might be hard. Maybe you have to go back into Betterment and see what they're actually doing. And then you can do your tax loss harvesting yourself. But then that's going to mean that um, you have a bit of tax issues there because you have to do all this manually within Betterment. Um, I assume they do this automatically for you. So me being a super frugal person and not wanting to spend money on fees, even if it's 0.25%, because um, these fees adds up over a really long time and, you know, setting myself up for a 0.25% fee for the next 30 years. It's just something that's uh, I wouldn't do. If you're a hands off type of investor, this is a really good way to invest so that you know, you're not making a bunch of mistakes. Because if you just go to a random brokerage account and just start investing, picking, you know, a handful of stocks, you're going to get in trouble that way. Investing in a typical 401k is not also not a very good thing. Because um, most of the time, not all the time, though, because there's some banks that have really low fee um, 401k accounts where the funds in it are really low fee, but a lot of 401ks, um, they have quite a high fee. So then most of the time, if you change from one company or to another, you really want to, uh, roll over this 401k perhaps into Betterment or perhaps into, um, another brokerage account or something, uh, where it's a retirement account. 
then um, you can have the option to buy more ETFs, which is lower cost. That's all I have to say for this app. Don't forget to give me a like on this video. Comment down below. Let me know what you think of paying 0.25% fee on your retirement, especially over a 30 year term. If you're interested in supporting the channel, and I would really appreciate it if you do, just check out my Audible link down in the video description below where you can get a free audiobook just for trying the service. Getting an audiobook is really good, especially on your commute, because you can listen to something sort of double duty yourself. Um, you can listen through, you know, one whole novel, fiction, nonfiction, and learn something new just through one week. And if you keep on doing this, you're going to keep on learning more and more stuff. So I highly recommend getting an audiobook, sticking it on your phone and having the habit of listening to something, learn something at the same time and also do your commute. If you're interested in supporting my channel directly, I have a Patreon account over here where I give various perks such as help with your credit score. Um, you can make suggestions for brand new videos that I make. Um, you can just go on Patreon. I'm a lot more responsive on there. You can have direct access to me um, via email or chat or whatnot, and we can discuss about your finances. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to my channel over here and click that bell icon next to the subscribe button so that you get a notification whenever I upload a brand new video. Thanks for watching.